Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel from Core Lesson. Today, for Mistake Monday, I want to talk about auto top offs. I recommend anyone with a big enough tank that um, has a sump to have an auto top off. Now, there's many different kinds of auto top offs out there. Uh, there's the ones with the floats, there's the vacuum lines, there's uh, different sensors. And I just recently installed these floats. And they're amazing, and the nice thing I love about them is that they're all connected together into the same unit. So I have one RODI system that uses the quarter inch line and they all just run around right from here. So it's easy to shut it off, it's easy to control. Um, if I'm working on something or draining a tank, I can just shut it off. Each one has its own valve, so that's nice. Um, but I just realized one of my tanks, even though it does use the same RODI system, I thought I updated this one, but if you look in there, it still has the old vacuum sensor that turns on. It just opens the line, the water drips out. So there's no pressure, there's no pump, there's no motor. I still use the gravity fed system. It's just that that sensor controls it opening and closing instead of the floats like I have on the other part. So the problem which I said I don't like with this one is it actually has a, a system where you need electricity. The solenoid, you have to have the tubing for the vacuum, you need the power cord um, for that to operate. So that's one of the reasons why I don't like this. And another problem that you have with auto top off systems is that snails or crabs or algae or something can grow or block it and stick or flood your system so I don't like them either so every system actually if you don't routinely maintenance stuff happens so that's one reason why I tell everyone always maintenance your system always check it have a routine set pattern to check your equipment heaters uh, pumps always have a backup pump if you can on hand because these are an investment we really love our tanks so let me tell you about my mistake and a little bit why um, I have a love-hate relationship with equipment. So this float in the back of the tank that I just recently installed, I was testing it out, but it was so slow to fill up because there's a lot of water in here. And it was also filling up this one at the same time in the back. So as this tank was filling up, this was filling up. So it was really, really slow. So I got tired of waiting. Anyway, I came back the next day to check it out and this thing was almost filled to the top. The float had failed me. So immediately right away I knew how the float, float works, so I took it apart. And of course, as I expected, there was something caught in the float. So when I drilled the hole to mount it for the back side, I'm assuming it was a piece of debris from the drilling that got stuck in there. Or even a piece of debris from the end of the tubing. So you have to watch out for that. If you're using something like that, you definitely want to always check your equipment. And take your time when you do it, don't rush it. That's how you get mistakes. But it is one of my favorite systems, because um, it is cheap. I mean, for about 10 bucks, you can have an auto top off system set up. You just have to drill a hole through your sump and then have this line fed in. So, let me um, open this up for you and I'll show you the inside. Because the water, it's meant to be mounted like this. Uh, the flow was actually tightened in the wrong position. So as gravity up opens and closes on this thing, it lets out water. So when the float, the water level reaches the correct level, the float will rise, shutting off the water flow. And this is a low pressure system since it's just a gravity fed auto top off. So it's really not an issue at all. But let me take this apart and show you guys the inside. Okay, I pretty much took the whole thing apart here. You can see that this is an adjustable float. The wing nut um, very easily allows you to adjust on here. And there is little notches to grip it, so that helps out. But pretty awesome. So the thing that you have to worry about is this little silicone stopper here. And this is the thing that holds the whole thing, that makes it work. So as long as this thing is soft and it's not decaying or got some kind of calcium buildup on it, it should always work. So that's the great thing about this. It's one of the cheapest auto top off systems. And as long as you have a clear passageway through here, this is where your quarter inch line goes in and there's usually some kind of compression nut that holds it in place. 
but it's very simple to use. So anyway, I love it. I had a problem, like I said, it was my fault maybe, possibly. I didn't inspect the part completely. So stuff from the factory isn't always put together correctly. So it's nice if you get something like this, you can take it apart, you can service it, you can check it out, but it should open and close. And if you want to, you can even hold your lips up to the end of here and you can blow in it. And if the water shuts off and you got a tight seal, then you know you're pretty good. So there is that. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you may have about auto top off systems in the comments below. Um, I didn't really think about this one much today, guys, but I just figured I'd give you a little update um, on RODI and auto top offs and just let you be aware. Things always happen in the reefing system, so usually it's when you first install something within the first 24 hours or you know, equipment that's been sitting for five years unnoticed and your system is just doing great and you totally haven't looked underneath your uh, cabinet for a while and you notice something's wrong. So, as always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Until next time.